Hey guys, I'm Siobhan, a fifth year medical resident. Today, I'm so excited to be shadowing a hospital pharmacist and we're gonna be going to places in the hospital I've never been to before and learning all about the role of inpatient pharmacists. Hey, Michelle. Hey, welcome. Sorry about my mess. <laughs> It's a landmark of these three, unfortunately. This is Dr. Michelle Louis, an inpatient hospital pharmacist who works with the internal medicine and cardiology teams. Aside from her messy desk, Michelle is known for her high energy and willingness to go above and beyond for her patients and co-workers. So today she starts off by reviewing patient charts, paying special attention to the new patients admitted overnight. So there's this patient who admitted overnight and she's a really interesting case. Oh, okay. So basically she's got this newly diagnosed AML. She's been getting some chemo from the last uh, couple of weeks, but she developed some side effects and she actually now can't swallow. Oh. Acute myeloid leukemia is an aggressive cancer that affects the blood and bone marrow. The ideal chemotherapy regimen consists of two IV medications and one pill called midastorin. Unfortunately, the patient developed a side effect to the chemo called mucositis, a very inflamed and painful mouth. And now she can't swallow the chemo pills that she desperately needs. Right now she has a feeding tube and obviously you can't shove a capsule into a feeding tube. So now we have to figure out how to do this. So what, like breaking it up or like You can't crush it. it. You can't crush it. You can't crush it. It's really hard to dissolve it in water. Um, so we're gonna try a couple of things um, and see what we can do. Okay, cool. Good luck to us. <laughs> Michelle starts by reading literature published about the chemo medication Midastorin. There's no IV or liquid formulations that exist. And there aren't any articles published about how to administer the drug through a feeding tube. So she decides to call the drug company next to see if they have any advice. But unfortunately, they couldn't offer a solution either. It's not, it's not approved. I talked, to, um, I talked to Drug Info. She had zero information. I went through case reports. There's no information. So now it really all comes down to Michelle's pharmacological knowledge and creativity. So I studied the compound and I think we have a solution, but we need okay. to try it out in the chemo room to right. actually verify this. Can we do that now? Oh, totally. Okay, let's do it. Drawing from her knowledge of other chemotherapy medications, Michelle is attempting to dissolve the gel capsule in warm water to create a liquid that can safely be administered through the patient's feeding tube. And amazingly, it works. Okay, so now that we've proven that it works, mm -hmm. your ingenious way, uh, should we go up and teach the nurse then? Is that the next step? For sure, yeah. Okay, let's do it. Awesome. Nicole is the patient's bedside nurse today. So Michelle explains how to prepare the medication. First, microwave some water until it's warm. Then add two capsules into a syringe and agitate the water for approximately 10 minutes until the capsules are fully dissolved. Sort of reminds me of like a high school project, but the stakes are so much higher. You can sort of see the gelatin has melted on the tip. I love so that. So wow. I'm, uh, I'm just making the goo kind of come off. Now all that's left is administering the medication. You can feel the sense of relief knowing that the patient can now stick with the prescribed cancer therapy because of Michelle's problem solving. Hope for the best. I'll be here. Oh, perfect. All right, so now it's time for cardiology rounds. This is when the medical team meets with the bedside nurse and pharmacist to discuss patient care. As a team, they go from room to room, assessing each patient and hearing any concerns they might have. Then there's a more in-depth discussion about medication therapies. I just need like 24 hours. We can convert it. I mean, we're both here tomorrow. We can convert that okay. tomorrow. Okay. One of the unique things about Michelle is that she somehow has everybody's cell phone number and she's able to track down doctors to discuss patient care better than anyone else I know. Oh, got a reply from Rishi. I think he's gonna come up right now. Perfect. Michelle reached out to Rishi, the senior resident doctor, to discuss antibiotic dosing for a septic patient. She points out that the patient's kidney function is rapidly declining and they need to reduce the antibiotic dose to prevent toxicity. Okay, so one of the things I'm really excited to know is what happens after I've written a prescription? Like, where does it go? How does it get to the patient? Because I've never really been able to see that process. 
And yes, we're still literally writing by hand our prescriptions at this hospital. Um, but by the end of the year, it's going to be all digital. But for now, we still have Bradma stamps to identify patient information, and we're using carbon copies. So not only do pharmacists have to decipher doctor's handwriting, but they have to read a copy of it. And just look at this example. I mean, how can you possibly see what these orders are? Medication orders are written by hand in the chart. Then the ward clerk processes the order, and the carbon copy is given to a pharmacist like Michelle to enter into the system. So we have a new order for hydroxyurea, and it seems to be a stat order, so I'm just going to enter it right now. Perfect! If it's a non-urgent medication, a pharmacy technician will bring it down to the ward and place it into a med card or refrigerator before the nurse needs to administer the medication to the patient. But if it's an urgent or stat order, we can use the hospital tubing system to deliver the medication more quickly. So this is our pneumatic tube system. Um, it transports things all over within the new side of the hospital. So if you need anything really, really quickly, this is actually a very good way to get things from one side to the other without a porter. So there's a tube like this. You open it up and it's nice and cushiony. So you put your head inside here. Close it, and you do just double check, 130. Oh! Oh, it's in here. Woohoo! It's so funny, when I first went into medicine, I thought it was going to be like super high tech, but I had no idea that a lot of the hospitals are working on seriously old technology. Oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it works. Pneumatic tube systems, who would have thought? Who would have thought, exactly. Pagers, Bradma machines. <laughs> Carbon copies, still around. I know, oh my gosh. Yeah. As you might imagine, only a small amount of medications are actually stored on the ward. The majority are kept locked up in Central Pharmacy. And that's where we're off to next. A truly new place I've never been in the hospital. <laughs> oh really? You haven't yeah. been to the Central Pharmacy ever? No, never. I called you guys there, but that's about it. <laughs> But you'll realize there's actually no sign for where the pharmacy is. Oh. And that's that for a reason. Oh, yes. Yeah. We don't want people, you know, poking it in their heads for drugs all the time. Oh, this is it? Yeah, I would never know. <laughs> never know. Okay, you do it. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. This is it? Yeah, so this is it. So, um, these are, you know, many many containers of all medications uh, that are around in the formulary there is a dispensary for picking for any doses that we need for the day so this is our pre-packing machine pre-packing machine pre-packing machine oh this pre-packing machine takes pills from these red containers and then packages them individually these little individual packs then get distributed to the wards and then administered by the nurses so do you promise not to disclose the location of this place? Okay, Because this promise. is the next room. <gasps> oh, gotcha. This is, where, this is where the quote unquote good stuff is. <laughs> wow. The narcotics room is where the controlled substances are kept. Bags of fentanyl, boxes of hydromorphone and benzodiazepines. These are addictive drugs that can be life-threatening if they're abused, which is why they're kept under high security. So I've seen so many people working behind the scenes here and I just really want to get a sense of what pharmacy techs do. So can you tell me? Of course, yes. <laughs> so uh, we're basically your drug dealers. We provide you all the drugs and medicine that you need throughout the entire hospital. Wow. All day, 24-7. That's amazing. <laughs> pharmacy technicians will also compound liquid medications, creams and ointments right here in the hospital. So I've learned that not all medications come pre-made from a manufacturer. Okay guys, now this is really cool. I didn't even know we'd get to see this today, but it looks like there's some new automated ways of picking medications, like little robots in the hospital now. This is the new box picker, an automated medication dispenser. The machine is loaded up with medications and there's a robotic claw that will pick the correct medication and drop it into a drawer. Kind of like a medication vending machine. Currently, they're still setting this machine up. So the cool thing is they're actually using Skittles <laughs> as the test for these medications. <laughs> oh, 
With such great technology, I just assumed that would mean less work for the pharmacy techs. But apparently, that's not the case. And does it mean that you'll now work fewer hours? Because no, no, not fewer hours because the robots have to run 24 seven. They are not as fast as humans, but they're more accurate than humans. And the change is for the better. It doesn't feel that way sometimes, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> I, could, I don't want to be 24 hours. Like I don't like night shifts, but yeah. it's just a part of healthcare. Oh, I understand that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so I've heard from a lot of you guys asking, what do you have to do to become a pharmacist like Michelle? So what's, what's the training process? So it's two years of undergrad minimum, and then obviously you go, you get in through admissions process and stuff like that. And then afterwards it's four years of um, undergrad in pharmacy. And then you have the option of doing a residency program, which is roughly uh -huh. a year. Um, and also potentially fellowships and graduate studies. In my first year of residency, at that point you were in ICU. Yes. And then I saw you on hematology. Yep. And then now you're on internal medicine. <laughs> yep. And before that I was in another hospital and I was doing medical oncology special wow. specializing in lung cancer. Wow, so okay, so you don't need to do a residency specifically in each of these areas. You can actually move fields within pharmacy and develop that expertise as you go. Yeah, so we're trained as generalists, whereas you guys are trained as specialists. Yeah, yeah. But you have the option, if you really enjoy something, you can totally do a, a fellowship in something um, and you do a specialist program. Um, but honestly, we become specialists because we've, um, stayed in that area for so long. What would you say is the biggest misconception that people have about pharmacists? Actually, as a matter of fact, I do more, I spend more time in my job de-prescribing, which is actually taking people's meds away than actually putting meds on mm -hmm. to their profile. Because everything that you put on definitely has a benefit, but definitely has also side effects. So really weighing out that balance is absolutely crucial. Um, so yeah, we're all minimalists at heart. We just love to take people's meds away and we spend more time convincing people that we do that as a job than adding things on. Oh, that's too funny. I love that. <laughs> I had an absolutely incredible time today. I'm just amazed at how much creativity and problem solving goes into the job. Not to mention how important the pharmacist role is connecting doctors, nurses, and allied health professionals. I've just seen how many people are stopping Michelle in the hallway, asking her questions, clarifying things. It's far beyond dispensing medications or catching errors. They're a vital part of patient care. And I've got to say, one of the highlights for me was meeting all the pharmacy technicians working behind the scenes. I feel like now I have a much bigger appreciation for what it means to write an order and have a medication show up for a patient. So thank you to the entire pharmacy team. This has been an amazing experience. If you like this type of video, you might want to check out this one where I shadowed an ICU nurse. And otherwise, be sure to subscribe and that way I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.